Formula One is a war fought on two fronts. In the glaring spotlight, there are the drivers, with Formula One hosting some of the best in the world to compete wheel to wheel for glory. But behind the scenes, hundreds of engineers and designers participate in the development battle, attempting to outwit the competition at every step. Today's video is about these guys. Now, if you're a true Formula One fan, you know that two teams have been stealing the spotlight this season, Red Bull and Aston Martin. And trust us, it's no coincidence. These teams have been blowing the competition out of the water thanks to their impressive innovation and engineering prowess. In this video, we're going to explore the key areas where Red Bull and Aston Martin excel, including a sneak peek at a critical area of the car that's often overlooked but is absolutely crucial. These teams are masters of their craft, and we can't wait to show you how they've pulled ahead of the pack. So, whether you're a seasoned Formula 1 fan or tuning in for the first time, brace yourself for a wild ride. Strap in and stay tuned until the end to learn all about the secrets behind Red Bull and Aston Martin's incredible success, so let's get started. Now, braking technology is one of the few areas in Formula 1 where extensive design freedoms remain and development never stops. The majority of the F1 team's brake caliper design development has focused on the front brakes as the rear system relies heavily on the reverse torque of the ERS-K, resulting in relatively small rear brake discs. Thus, the majority of the direct braking occurs at the front. The calipers contain the hydraulically operated pistons which clamp the brake pads down onto the carbon brake disc and it's that area which Red Bull and Aston Martin have exploited to the max. As the drivers slam on the brakes, the kinetic energy of an F1 car is converted to heat, generating extreme heat. The discs routinely reach temperatures of over 1000 degrees Celsius. Thus, the calipers must be stiff enough not to be distorted by braking forces while also being light. Because the wheel and brakes are attached to the suspension rather than supported by it, any weight has a particular negative impact on the car's grip and ride quality. So, to reduce the masses of the calipers while maintaining adequate stiffness, extremely intricate methods have been devised. Cooling channels for heat dissipation also reduce mass. The cooling holes in the disc help dissipate heat faster when the brakes are not in use, but they also ensure that the discs get even hotter when they're in use because the energy is distributed over a smaller mass of material. The more the calipers can assume some of the heat dissipation role, the better. Aston Martin introduced extravagantly ribbed and machined calipers last year, and Red Bull has followed suit this season. This year's Aston has retained the intricate calipers but recited them lower on the disc, lowering the center of gravity. Red Bull already had one there last year, but now have introduced a more intricately designed caliper that matches Aston's level of detail. Competitors are already looking for ways to replicate Red Bull and Aston Martin's strengths as they develop their own 2023 machines, and caliper design will most likely play a small but significant role in that process. But there's an even bigger surprise when it comes to the Red Bull car's design, which puts them ahead of everyone, and it was highlighted to great extent at Jeddah. The ease in which Max Verstappen blasted past Lewis Hamilton in the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix left an immediate impression about the magnitude of Red Bull's straight-line speed advantage. Soon after the race, Hamilton stated that he'd never seen a car with such a significant speed advantage over the competition as the RB19. I don't know why or how, but he came past me with serious speed. Hamilton's comment sparked a lot of speculation about Red Bull's top speed dominance and how it was achieved. While it's obvious that Red Bull's car has tremendous aerodynamic efficiency, much of the attention has been focused on the speed boost that Red Bull appears to get from having its DRS turned on. Contrary to popular belief, there can and do exist differences in DRS effectiveness between teams based on how their wings are shaped. While the FIA mandates a maximum gap of 85mm that can be open between the main plane and upper flap, its effectiveness can be tuned through the wing's overall design features. But rather than being a clever maneuver, Red Bull's strategy appears to be as simple as having a wing that was perfectly suited to the Jeddah circuit's requirements. As we all know, teams develop a suite of rear wing designs for the various tracks that F1 visits throughout the season. These are frequently classified as low, medium and high downforce wings. However, there are frequently many more options available in the suite of wings than just one type for each level of downforce. 
When compared to the previous regulatory era, many teams have seen a decrease in the number of bespoke wing solutions due to resource constraints and cost caps. And with a low downforce high-speed venue like Saudi Arabia slotted into the second place in the calendar, many teams didn't have a more bespoke option in their suite available just yet. Red Bull on the other hand did, with a new wing following the same general layout as the version used in Bahrain. It did however have changes to the main plane, upper flap and end plate transitions to reduce downforce and drag while also shifting the DRS delta compared to the wing used in Bahrain. Furthermore, Red Bull only used one beam wing element, which has an impact not only on the downforce and drag generated, but also on the behavior of the diffuser and rear wing, as they're all linked to one another aerodynamically. This relationship also affects how the car performs when DRS is enabled and disabled, meaning that there's always a trade-off between how the car performs in traffic and in free air. It seems though that Red Bull have made the right choice with the compromise, as Max Verstappen was able to effortlessly slice through the field from 15th on the grid to finish second behind his teammate. And 1996 world champion Damon Hill expects Red Bull's breathtaking straight line speed to get everyone talking in Formula 1. When asked for his view on Hamilton's comment, Hill said, He said the fastest car there's ever been in Formula 1. I think what he meant was that there is a huge speed differential when the DRS is open. They're able to accelerate a lot more. That's going to get everyone's attention. I noticed it last year. They're having a very interesting rear wing, very elongated, and when you look at it, it goes into DRS mode. It has a very low profile. I think they've done a lot of work on that. It gives them a bigger advantage than the others when they have DRS. I think everyone else is going to look at that and say maybe they're missing something. Straight line speed has long been a source of concern for the Red Bull package, dating back to the first season of the V6 hybrid engine rules back in 2014. For the first five seasons of the turbo hybrid era, the team struggled with an underpowered and unreliable Renault powertrain before agreeing to switch to Honda units in 2019. Despite an overall improved performance, Red Bull continued to struggle in a straight line until the end of Verstappen's first title-winning season in 2021, when the Dutchman was unable to keep up with Lewis Hamilton on the flat-out blast at Interlagos, when the Mercedes driver won despite being disqualified from qualifying. However, with the implementation of ground effect regulations in 2022, Red Bull suddenly excelled in straight line speed with the low drag RB18 car, which Verstappen used to get the team's first win at the Italian GP at Monza, F1's famous temple of speed since 2013. Red Bull has proven to be a terrifying package for the competition to deal with, and there appears to be no end in sight to their dominance, at least for the time being. However, the paddock should be even more wary of Max Verstappen as the grid arrives in Australia. The Dutchman raced in Saudi Arabia despite suffering from a stomach bug which forced Verstappen out of the designated media day in Jeddah. And Red Bull's chief advisor, Helmut Marko, has since revealed more information about Verstappen's condition at the previous race, estimating that he was operating at about 80% with Red Bull junior Liam Lawson on standby in the event that the world champion was unable to compete. He told the German press, Max was not 100% fit, but now he's doing everything he can to return to maximum performance. That's why we'll see a different Verstappen again in Australia. But what are your thoughts? What are the key components that Red Bull, and to a lesser extent Aston Martin, have nailed this season? And do you believe anyone else will be able to catch up and compete for victories based solely on merit this season? Give us your opinions in the comment section down below.